It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because our favorite national anthem is Kimi by Yo Mama. The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. Welcome back to Talk Funny. This is Mark Bailey. We're here with, on mic, uh, we've got Steve Howard, we've got Mike Miller in, for immoral support in the background. And we're also here with Joe Magic, him and Hyman. We're doing these uh, podcasts brought to you by NagoyaComedy.com and NagoyaRadio.com. You can contact us at AsportJapan at Yahoo.com for email uh, comments. You can also listen to this podcast on our NagoyaComedy.com website, and you can leave comments, I, I think, there as well, as well as Facebook, and you can check our dates. So, Steve, uh, we ha- we brought up uh, before that Steve and I – there's a story I was just telling off mic. Steve and I had the opportunity to be invited to go to Fukuoka, and this kind of ties in with open mic people because uh, the guy that invited us, I said, I don't want to – is this part of open mic because I don't really want to be part of open mic. I did it in the 80s and stuff. And he said, no, you're just open, and you you know, but we have very limited shifts, and so you have five minutes. And I said, I'm bringing another guy. Is that five minutes each? He goes, it's five minutes between the two of you, two and a half minutes each. And I said, fine. You know, somebody else might whinge. You might whinge about it. But no, it's they give you two and a half minutes in Fukuoka that you didn't have before. And like Mike likes to bring up, it only costs 30,000 yen a minute and by Shikansen. And, and it only took us eight hours to reserve a, a hotel room to stay over and after I the lit show. No problems with my wife. Get, get Not at all. you, you got to get really – come on, you homophobe. Maybe. More. <laughs> Steve and I were invited down to do Fukuoka, a show of Fukuoka, and they said you got five minutes between the two of you. That's two and a half minutes each. So we uh, – I don't know if you remember this, but we actually did time ourselves. We timed each yeah. other. And to make sure – because if we went – you know. If, if he goes three or four, then I get one and vice versa. If we do six, we were banned. We're blacklisted. And then, as the, Steve, you can finish the story. When we got there, we were really careful not to do over more than five total. And then they said – And they said, um, nobody's here, so do as much as you want. Yeah. One of the guys didn't come. Right. We can say this. Bobby Judo didn't come. Uh-huh. And then – the other guy was contingent about of, of Bobby Judo coming. If he wasn't coming, he didn't want to perform. Right. So they said, you can do, I said, how about 10? And he goes, you can do 10, 20. So how about 20? He goes, you can do 20, whatever you want. I'm like, wow, that's good. So it pays to be polite. You know, you were willing to play under the rules. So that goes into open mic where if we say you have three minutes, do a respectful two minutes of 50 seconds and then get off and you'll be invited back next time. But not like a Finnish guy that got on there one time and said, I did five, like you asked. Can I have another one? Well, not when you're holding the mic. What are we going to say? No, what are you going to do? You're going to drop the mic and break it? Now nobody can do it, right? So what were your impressions of the Fukuoka show? Uh, that, that almost yeah, didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> It would have been interesting if there would have been an audience um, because the, the room was so small. We basically would have been performing for the front row's knees, I think. We basically performed for uh, comics. It was kind of a yeah. green room episode. There was a Lady Kicks. She was really good. Yeah. And we just performed for her. Tony and uh, some of the other people that were there. T- Taylor was at the other. Taylor, episode? yeah, he was the MC. Another episode we were talking about like the difference between open micers and professionals. And so when me and Mark got there, we were thinking we were going to, you know, do each of us was going to do two and a half minutes. And we show up, and the guy's like, "Oh well, do as much as you want." So Mark goes downstairs like ten minutes before the show is going to start, and he just you know comes up with a 20 minute set and then he goes upstairs and he performs it so it's just like you know when you're talking about the difference between an open micer and a professional um i don't think there's an open micer in the in un- in the entire universe that with 10 minutes before the show could come up with 20 minutes and then go upstairs and perform it um and that's, I, I was very very impressed and that's why steve's on podcast yeah. <laughs> to say that yeah. <laughs> Get, okay, Steve, get, get, get closer to the mic, Steve. Yeah. So no, no, you, you, you've the organic got, one. So yeah, but that is a point because we we've got a comedian who will not be named, but at one of the shows we did recently, he's famous for doing the same act all the time. We actually told him for this time it's a different city, and you can actually do the same act that you've already done that you were going to do even when we told you not to do the same act. You're going to do that anyway. So go ahead. And then we asked him to be on second, and he came on. Uh, I came up to him, and I, I was emceeing, and I said, "You ready? It, you know, it's time to go second. He said, "I'm not ready. I'm still writing." my act you know and i'm like uh there's no writing to your act i mean i can do your act i mean you know uh, it's like i'm not ready so when mc says are you ready and you're doing 20 right i thought i was doing two and a half minutes we're doing 20 okay <laughs> yes is the correct answer and uh, tim and i had a discussion about that we were saying so you're sitting in the green room because you know uh, the cousin of jerry seinfeld right you're sitting in the green room and the uh, producer runs up because Seinfeld's in the bathroom and she doesn't know anything about comedy. She doesn't know what Seinfeld. She walks up to Steve and she goes, walks up to Steve and go, you ready to do your six in the Tonight Show? What do you say, Steve? Uh, well, I was only going to do 10 at GC Live, so of course I can't do the Tonight <laughs> Show. Yeah, so the answer is, the correct answer is yes. 
Where do I stand? Right. Where's my mark? <laughs> That's what you do, you know. Okay. So and so, yeah, I've had so I had instances in New York where I was thrown into the MC position. My uh, partner was rocked, not stoned. He wasn't stoned. He was rocked. Anyway, so he was paranoid, and he said, "I can't handle that responsibility." And it's just you tricked me. That's yeah, crystal clear. <laughs> You asked me to do, uh, you know, you asked me to do five. Now you asked me to MC. What, what, what are you trying to do? Promote me in comedy? What are you trying to do? Help my career? Just trying to give me a break? So, of course, I said yes. And then uh, after that, I just did the regular MC position for about a year there. So it's, it's good. Always say yes. And there's a story I have for students. One time I had students, and I had them in a different room. They, they went to the library. I walked up to a guy who was uh, away from the table. He was a student. And I said, uh, go tell the other students that they can leave if they're finished. Okay? And he goes, okay. And he walks back and he sits down. He doesn't say anything to them, apparently. And I come back. The, that was fourth period. I come back fifth period. They're still sitting there at the library. And they're like, since then, can we go now? We're fourth period. We, we have, like, clubs and stuff to go to. And I said, uh, uh, the guy is still sitting there. And I said, come here. Didn't I tell you? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? from Goodfellow? What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you? To, I told you to tell them that you, they can go if they're finished. You remember that? He goes, yeah, I remember you saying something. And then I said, what did you say? You said, okay. And he goes, yeah. I said, but did you understand what I said? And he said, no. I said, let me let me show you a trick that, and, and Joe will know this, the Houdini, why Houdini died, how he died. Which time? <laughs> Not when he disappeared, but he died of a, he died of a, don't get a started on stomach uh, intestine ulcers and stuff, but uh, he died because he was not feeling well. He had a flu. He's walking through the, through the street, and he had this trick where people just off the street could like, he would prepare, but they would punch him as hard as they could in the stomach. That's accurate. Yeah. I guess the guy said, you mind if I punch him in the stomach? And Houdini probably thought he said, how you doing? And he said, okay. And he punched him and he wasn't ready. He hemorrhaged to death. He died. He that's, yeah, that's a loose translation. Well, in, uh, I believe it was a ruptured appendix is the story okay. I always hear. But yeah. In the Hebrew-Hungarian, it's a little different. Uh, but uh, he's actually <laughs> oh, Hungarian. Yeah, he, he was. was, yeah, he was yeah, Hungarian. Eric Weiss. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, so the, the moral of that story is, even if you're not a magician, I, I, I acted it out with the student. I said, Da, 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 da. Okay, and he goes okay, and I went boom, and I hit him in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, this was, and he bled out. Yeah, and, yeah. he bled out, and, and, and then and boy, you learned him. Huh? Then I had to yeah. fake an ulcer and go to the hospital and pretend to be crazy. To boy, I got out of that uh, charge. So, so actually, I didn't, I didn't punch him in the stomach. Posthumously, posthumous a. What I, what I actually did was when he said okay, I just did this in his face. I clapped in his face, and he's surprised. And I said, that was shocking, right? And I said, what if I had punched you in the stomach or shot you in the head or something? I said, don't ever say okay. Don't ever say okay when you don't know what the question is. Don't ever say okay. By the way, tell those idiot, the other idiots, imbeciles over there, they can go home now, okay? He's like, okay, don't punch me again. Yeah. But it's like, that's the moral of the story. It's like, if someone says, you know, we're thinking of giving you a lobotomy, Steve, what do you think about that? I don't really understand what you said, but okay. Then the next time Steve gets up, it's like, why are you doing Nathan's act? <laughs> No, no, or, no. or as Gary would say, not a real about oh, no. Did somebody did somebody turn the heat off in here? I don't understand. The heat is on. I'm starting to feel like I'm on one of these episodes of Black Mirror. Yeah. Oh, we should like uh, a spaceship or something. I don't. We should, know. Uh, the, uh, we should actually talk about our favorite Netflix. Well, I like Netflix. And yeah, so what shows you like on Netflix? Uh, just about everything, you know. I mean, it's, a, it's the best five bucks I spend a month. I say. Does that include chew highs or? Uh, well, yeah, you know. I mean, because you know, five bucks worth of chew high lasts me like about sixteen minutes. But you know, it, you're talking about a month's worth of content. Do you like the dramas? And do you watch the comedy specials as well? Yeah, oh yeah. And so we, we talked about Black Mirror. There, I was season four, and it's hard not to binge it. I binge the whole thing. And, I got uh, one to go, so no spoilers, all right? Okay, so in the last one, somebody's writing in now, right? <laughs> so in the last one, uh, at the end, actually, it was just never mind. No. Yeah, yeah. But they're they're really really good. There's one with a gamer. That I think it's the first episode. That was the one I'm talking about. That yeah, you know, where like where everybody had to kiss his ass. <laughs> so funny. On the show. Joe, Joe Rogan likes Black Mirror, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, as comics, we're not used to having to kiss the butt of a venue owner or anything, so it was really, you know, a new territory for me to watch this. It wasn't familiar at all. Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, some people have to live that way. <laughs> yeah. Some people, we call them comics. Or oh! or married men. <laughs> yeah. Mine Hunters is the one I can't get into. Manhunt, uh, Unabomber, is the one I love. Yeah, I love that was it. really cool. Really? Yeah, do you see it all? Really cool. Yeah, yeah, I watched that. It's a docudrama based on real facts, and, and the actors are just impeccable. Just great. The guy, the guy who played... Uh, Kaczynski, Ted oh. Kaczynski. Oh, I, that's a spoiler. <laughs> Unabomber is Ted Kaczynski. Oh. It's a so, spoiler from 1979. If you're listening to this in 1962, <laughs> you probably have no idea what we're talking about. But. And they, they caught him. Oh, jeez. Oh, 
Okay. Stop with the spoilers. I know, I know. His bro- I mean, oh. Oh, man. no. Yep. And he was a genius. Oh, genius. He was a genius. Yep. yep. And but, an excellent typist. Excellent typist. <laughs> because you can't have your pie and step on it, too. That's just, when you watch it, that's not a spoiler. When you watch it, you'll understand. And when it's raining cats and dogs, don't step in a poodle. <laughs> exactly. So it was. I thought it was really well done. And I, I binged that one as well. And the thing that I liked about it is, you know, I, I'm a lingu- linguist nerd. And, you know, in this one, the, the, finally, finally, the hero was a linguist nerd, you know. But actually, he was banging a linguist nerd. <laughs> he was like this, that, yeah. yeah. The so, father, <laughs> the father of forensic linguistics. And that yeah, was she so, was the mother of <laughs> forensic <laughs> linguistics. Did you, did you see Wormwood? Mm. No, no. Is oh, it good? It's it's excellent. It's yeah, excellent. Worse. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's unbelievable. It's a story that I knew nothing about and uh, just you know couldn't stop watching it, and got my payoff as a magician because one of the characters that uh, came into play in the story was a uh, famous magician, John Mulholland. Oh. He was a, uh, a um, an advisor to uh, the war program and the CIA, and uh, he uh, he figured into the story uh, kind of marginally, but uh, it was it was very interesting. El Chapo is one I like. I watch all of those. I noticed you brought that up onto the monitor. Well, now, so we're we're probably just going to stop talking now and watch Netflix for a while. I just, Everybody, please pardon us while we uh, we just space out here for a bit. This is automated um, ads by Netflix, yeah. but I just had an announcement to make. I am El Chapo, so. <laughs> The they can't or? see the screen, Mark. They can't. So it, it is Netflix original El Chapo. But I was looking for... There was, a, there was a barking dog there. I believe it was a Rottweiler. Well, Narcos is one. That's a great one. I, I recommend that Narcos, one. Narcos, and I'll bet it'll come up with the other one. Probably that's how I found it the first time. Narcos is great. It's mostly in Spanish, but I'm used to that now. Let's see. Not bad boys. <laughs> laundering. Drug laundering. Ozark? Drug laundering? Ozark. There it is. It was just there. Yeah. The Ozark. Because there's no such thing as drug laundering. That's an accident that happens when you leave a bag in your pocket and your mom washes it. <laughs> do you, Mike, do you recognize this actor? This, of course, never happened in my house. Uh, Jason but, Bateman. Uh, Jason Bateman is amazing. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. Did you see this? Yeah, lots this, of fun. My wife watched the first 16 minutes of it and went, okay, I'm done. You just go watch that in your room and don't <laughs> let the boys see it. <laughs> Jason Bateman is so good because he's he's a comic actor, but he's, he's it's not total, this time. Well, he's a total <laughs> he's a total straight man. So basically, without giving he away, seems to be under a lot of pressure in this show. Yeah, he's, you know? he's got crap coming from his wife and his kids and the uh, landlord and all kinds of people, How many drug angles? lords. How many angles can you resist? And they ask him theoretical questions, like the landlady. She's like, "Why would you be burying a body in the backyard?" And he goes, "Well, this is why. Where See, I was in Chicago it? and I got blackmailed, <laughs> and then this happened. Then the drug lord said, "I'll kill your whole family." Or you have to kill this guy and bury him in, a, in an untraceable location, which is why I bought this place for the in the first place. Any other questions? Because I'm kind of under a lot of stress here. If you don't have any more questions, I'd like to get some sleep. This and he was, pulls it off so well. This was a harebrained idea that I had while someone was killing the other people around me in the circle, <laughs> kneeling on the ground. In the and he's talking to his <laughs> wife, who's his wife, and and you know a lot of people die in this thing. And he's talking to his wife. He's still married to her. Listen, I have a lot of stuff. She to was explain. a good woman, by the way. You know, stuck by her man. <laughs> Either that or die. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you know, that's uh, and he that's goes, the, that's the vow, right? He goes, listen, I got a lot of stuff to say here. I know you're cheating. And she's like, but but he goes, that's not our biggest problem right now. <laughs> we have some bigger problems than that. Yep. See, bigger. Than Sorry Nipple about Valley. your boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And, uh, and, and it wasn't like, me. <laughs> she's like, it, it, she's like, it's over. He goes, damn right, it's over. He was thrown from the thirty-first floor of the Sears Tower. <laughs> yeah, it's over. He goes, but that's not. A, it's kind of like airplane, you know. It's got to get to the hospital. What is it? Uh, unintended co- from, no, copyright infringement on the Sears Tower. Yeah. Which, yeah it, was, what, it was unintended. Get into a hospital now. What is it? It's a big building full of sick people. That's not important right now. What I really want to tell you is, you know, I recommend that Ozark. Any other recommendations? Uh, well, I mean, Netflix in general, I mean, it's the best five bucks a month you can spend. Here's uh, one that my son likes, and I'm trying to get through it, Mindhunter. Mindhunter. It's kind of pre... So this is a story of the early behavioral science profiling department of the FBI and the two guys who founded it. And I've been trying to get through it, but there's just a lot of fake drama where... At the, have you seen this, Mindhunter, at all? No, no. no it's, uh, my son says it's good, and I've had other people recommend it, but it's kind of slow-moving for me. I mean, this... You know, this should be in bed by now. This is kind of slow. I don't I mean, know. I mean, just she's kinda... got a nail file to his throat and uh... a screwdriver. Yeah. There's just kind of bad. It's kinda... For me, it's bad dialogue. No, I'm not talking about this. Well, for example, okay, so they're sitting around debating the two guys that start this. Is anybody going to believe this behavioral science stuff? Is it going to even work? Can it even help solve crimes? And then this uh, country uh, policeman guy who's, you know, trying to nail this. He's trying to find a murderer. And he comes up and he goes, sorry to bother you guys. Can I ask you a question? 
the guy said, here's the killer. I'm trying to find him. We don't have many clues. We just know he's an older white guy, blah, blah, blah. 